So glad to have you with us here. I'm Christy Paul. Former Penn State coach Jerry Sandusky appeared briefly in court today, and his lawyer asked that charges be dropped against him. Sandusky is facing more than 52 counts involving sexual acts with 10 boys dating all the way back to 1994. He's pled not guilty and remains under house arrest until his trial begins in June. You know, I always want to give you a heads up if I think something is going to make you queasy. So let me warn you, this story includes some pretty graphic language. A well-known audio expert says George Zimmerman did not use a racial slur on a 911 call the night Trayvon Martin died. Zimmerman's attorney says his client used the word punks. Audio expert Tom Owen enhanced that audio on the 911 call so you can hear it better. And, and we're about to play that for you. But first, please know Zimmerman says the F word just before the word in question. So uh, here now is the enhanced video or audio for you. It, it was played three times there for you so you could maybe try to understand it. A CNN audio engineer also enhanced the audio and he sat down with reporter Gary Tuckman to analyze the recording a second time. We've bleeped out the F word here for you. So HLN is not able to confirm, by the way, what Zimmerman said on the tape, but a lot of people obviously trying to analyze it. Uh, and, and we've learned some other news uh, about this case as well. I want to bring in in session legal contributor. You know, with a record jackpot, you would have thought someone would have made a legitimate claim for the Mega Millions lottery by now, right? There are three winning tickets. No one's shown up with one yet. The story is hot, though, on HLNTV.com. Website editor Katie Caperton here with the details. I kind of understand this. If I won, I don't know that I'd be shouting it to the world. Exactly. Well, this is a funny story because remember all the buzz? We were talking about it last week. You can privately collect it, but in none of the states has anyone actually stepped forward except for the one woman in Maryland who claims she has a ticket. We haven't seen yes, it yet. Yeah, 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 I remember that. She claims she has it, but we haven't actually seen it. In her Do anything. Don't announce my name, but all right. Well... <laughs> Uh, that lottery would would buy a lot of tomatoes. It would. Tomato, tomato, whatever it's going to be. <laughs> but if you're a fan, apparently go to Orlando. Go to Orlando or in a few months go to Miami or elsewhere around the country. If you're driving down one of the major areas, they're giving about $10,000 worth of uh, tomatoes to, to local food. But Neck looking. <laughs> just keep your eyes on the road. But that's what it is, if you're wondering. Yeah. Thank you, Katie, Thank so you. much. Uh, April, by the way, if you didn't know, is Autism Awareness Month. And just ahead, CNN Eye reporters check in to share their life experiences with us. Most of us know what autism is, but it's difficult for us to imagine what it's like to actually live with it. So some of our eye reporters shared their stories with us. Take a look. Oh, I love that. I loved hearing the positives that they point out about, about what it's like to live with it as well. So thank you to all of, all of those folks for sharing and bringing us into, into your world so we can be aware as in this Autism Awareness Month. Uh, expect to see a new revamped Burger King commercial featuring R&B superstar Mary J. Blige soon. An ex-Marine will be reunited with her beloved military. Oh, the military had denied her earlier request because Rex was still a valuable work dog, but now he's getting older, so the military approved her adoption last month. Would like to see that when it happens. Uh, a new Colorado beer maker is brewing something different. Reynolds Wolf has the story in this Start Small, Think Big. Couple's World War II love letters being turned... Well, a woman has turned her grandmother's love letters into jewelry. She calls it wearable history. So creative. Affiliate WHAS has the story. What a sweet way to preserve that love. Our thanks to Brian Baker and Affiliate WHAS for the story there. Uh, you know, newly enhanced audio is raising more questions about what George... And by the way, there's also uh, some news that Zimmerman's attorneys may be setting up a website for Zimmerman's defense that you, the public, can view. We're going to talk more about that in about half an hour. Meanwhile, you're going to find a whole lot of restless passengers at the Dallas airport. Mm -hmm. A family who survived the Texas storms captured a tornado on tape as it headed straight for their house. Listen to this as they recount those terrifying moments uh, to Gary Tuckman. <laughs> the wife putting her foot down. I was thinking the same thing. I, he's a brave man to stand out there that long. Uh, total chaos at a university. You remember that viral video about Joseph Coney called Coney 2012? Well, there's a sequel now. In new details from Whitney Houston's final autopsy report show the singer drowned in a foot. Mm, now, for even more details from the autopsy report, you can check it out at our website, hlntv.com. And while you're there, you can also watch the trailer for Houston's final movie, Sparkle.
But what a story we're hearing out of Denver today. Uh, a 911 operator apparently made a mistake that ended up costing a young man his life. Jim Arit was riding in a car with two of his brothers and a friend when they got into an altercation with another group inside a Jeep. A fight broke out of some sort. The men in Riet's car began to chase the Jeep while calling 911. Eventually, they gave up that chase and they drove home to a town just outside Denver. But the 911 operator told the group, no, drive back to Denver, park, and wait for police. Well, they did that. And while they were waiting for officers, that group in the Jeep spotted them and fired shots into their car. 24-year-old Jim Arit was killed. HLN law enforcement analyst. Operator has held this position for two years. Yeah. So I mean, we can understand it. Now, no one was arrested, uh, but the university is investigating what happened. And three people did go to the hospital. About 30 more had to be treated there at the scene for pepper spray exposure. Uh, a JetBlue pilot who had some sort of mid-air meltdown will undergo a psych evaluation. It could determine if Clayton Osbin is competent to stand trial. Last you sing Lee Greenwood's God Bless the USA song.